What he's doing today is woefully insufficient. Joe asked the right question. Why not set it at zero? And it should be noted that this only addresses one of the three key buckets of individuals who are entering the country. This is addressing the bucket of individuals who are entering through non-ports of entry. Think about somebody wading across the Rio Grande River and coming in and claiming asylum. We saw about 2.4 million of those individuals last year. This would throttle that down to about 900,000 individuals. It does nothing to address what we call known gotaways. Last year, roughly 600,000 individuals who were observed entering the country, but who got away, and we have no idea who those individuals are. And the third bucket is the 1,500 individuals a day, roughly another half a million uh, people per year who are coming through legal ports of entry. And so the action by the president is woefully insufficient to a challenge as large as he has created. He needs to take a series of executive actions, all of which are under his authority, to actually and truly secure the border. Well, I do know that you want more congressmen, and I anticipated uh, that you would give us an answer like that. But if this would, in fact, lower crossings, illegal crossings uh, on any level, and it appears to be by thousands, why not do this now and ask for more after? There's nothing wrong with the president taking this executive action, but I think it's important for the American people to realize that this is woefully insufficient to address the crisis that he has created at the U.S.-Mexico border. The crisis is being felt not just in communities along the border, but being felt in my home state of Wisconsin and across the country. And so the president needs to take a series of executive actions, most importantly, to reinstate stay in Mexico and the catch and release program and end the abuse of the parole system and reinstart border wall construction immediately. Again, he's taking a small step in the right direction, but woefully insufficient to address the challenge that he has created by allowing the U.S.-Mexico border to remain unsecured. Well, the way the White House is characterizing this, Congressman, is that to actually adequately address the challenge would require congressional action. They said so in the statement. Of course, the president had agreed to a bipartisan uh, compromise with Senate negotiators earlier this year that quickly died. I know that you're probably going to tell me that the House passed H.R. 2, but considering H.R. 2 was known to be dead on arrival uh, when it passed the House as it received not a single Democratic vote, and obviously the bipartisan border deal didn't end up going anywhere. Should you not try to start fresh, try I, to find a compromise? I, I'd, I'd, I'd critique a little bit of there what you said as it relates to the Senate bill. I think it's important to reflect back on the most recent vote on the Senate bill. They didn't even get all the Democrats on board. That's how broken the bill is that is called, as your term, bipartisan. My, my view would be the opposition to the bill is bipartisan. Only a, a fraction of the Democrats even voted for it because it doesn't work. The House passed bill actually works. It actually secures the U.S.-Mexico border. It was passed now approaching a year ago. The Senate should act on it. If the Senate thinks that they can make amendments to make it better, make adjustments, I'd love to see that vote take place on the Senate floor. I actually think uh, that it would pass in the Senate because it works. And the problem that's been created by this administration is so significant that actually there is a political need to act. Further, the president has a series of executive actions that he could take, over 60 in total, that he could take to substantively secure the U.S.-Mexico border. Again, the, the four easiest that are at the top of the table is reinstating the stay in Mexico policy, ending catch and release, restart border wall construction, and end abuse of the parole system. But there's a series of actions that he could take. The action he is about to take today, as reported, is woefully insufficient to actually address the crisis that is impacting every community across the country. Well, it'll be especially insufficient if it's struck down in court, of course, Congressman. And I wonder what your thought is on that. Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act. Everyone's suddenly an expert every time this comes up again. We saw this not play well in court for Donald Trump in some cases when he invoked those authorities. If that happens again now, it's kicked back to the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue and we start all over again to Kaylee's point, right? Well, this is in large part where the House passed border security package is so essential. We make essential reforms to the asylum system to end the abuse of the process. Importantly, what we're seeing right now is when individuals illegally enter the United States, they're often released with a notice to appear. In other words, a court date 
three, four, five years out. And at that point, they're released into the country and able to travel freely. What we should do is dramatically accelerate the process that we're reviewing those cases. And again, when they're reviewed, about 98% are ultimately rejected, meaning the vast majority of the individuals coming into the United States illegally are actually making an asylum claim that when adjudicated, when heard by a judge, are found to not be valid. And so we could dramatically increase the rate and scope of how we're processing those claims. Again, the House passed border security package makes those adjustments to our asylum laws that are essential. If the court chooses to strike this down, which I don't think that they should do, but if they did, all the more reason the Senate should act on the House passed border security legislation. Congressman, one of your colleagues in the House, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, yesterday floated the idea of forcing an impeachment vote against President Biden over this issue of the border. If she succeeded in getting that on the floor, would you vote to impeach the president? I think we got a big election coming up in November and the American people are going to be able to have their say as relates uh, to the disastrous policies being put forward uh, by President Biden. I think we are always better served when the American people are able to make that decision. I'm incredibly concerned with the actions of President Biden day in and day out. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're about six months away from the election. The American people are going to have their opportunity to have their voice heard. Mm. Interesting as the primary takes place today in the District of Columbia here in the capital city, Congressman, something is going to happen that's never happened before. As uh, non-citizen residents are allowed to vote in primary elections to have a say in the communities that they live in, more than 500 non-citizen residents registering to vote and have cast their ballots here today. This is an issue that you have strongly opposed and tried to take action against as chair of the admin committee in the House of Representatives. Now that it's happening, what will it mean? I've held a series of hearings on this exact point. I think it's important for all of your listeners and viewers to realize that today in our nation's capital, non-citizens are legally allowed to vote in particular municipal elections for things like city council. This includes individuals working in an embassy. So just to give you a flavor of how ridiculous the law is in our nation's capital, the front door to the country, an individual, say, working at the Russian embassy, residing in D.C. for only 30 days, is eligible to vote in our nation's elections. I'm of the view that U.S. elections should be for U.S. citizens only. We passed a bill here in the House to ban non-citizens from voting here in our nation's capital. The Senate has refused to act on that. I think that they should. And more broadly, we need to make sure that we're ensuring elections across the country are for U.S. citizens only. The fact that our nation's capital today is allowing non-citizens to vote in a primary election for positions like city council is absolutely absurd, and I think we need to change the law. Congressman, we have just a minute left with you, but to what extent are you concerned about, in your home state of Wisconsin, people who shouldn't be legally allowed to vote attempting to do so. This is a, a broader concern that we've had. We had a, a series of hearings and what we have seen are non-citizens registered to vote illegally in other locations in particular. Ohio recently identified a number on their voter rolls. Georgia did a proper check. Pennsylvania identified issues as well. I think at a period of time we need to dramatically look at whether or not we have non-citizens on the voter rolls in states across the country. We need to make sure that we're protecting the integrity of our elections such that only U.S. citizens vote in our elections. At a period of time when 7 million people have come across the border illegally under President Biden's three and a half years, where you have cities uh, in jurisdictions like Washington, D.C., not only allowing but encouraging non-citizens to vote. I think it's absolutely imperative that we're making sure that we're protecting the integrity of our elections by making sure our elections are for U.S. citizens only.